What is a stone altar? And why do we celebrate it at the Feast of Tabernacles? Well, we as a church at Evander Revival Center, we celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles every year in the month of October. And as we celebrate it, we build a stone altar unto God. Why? Well, let me take you back to Joshua chapter 4 in the Old Testament. The very first thing that the Israelites did when they crossed over into the promised land, they built an altar unto God. Now, in the Old Testament, altars were significant. Altars were a place of worship which spoke of relationship with God. So whenever you read in the Old Testament of somebody building a stone altar unto God, that is speaking about the relationship that they had with God. We see how Noah in Genesis chapter 8 verse 20 built an altar unto God. That was the very first thing he did when he came out of the ark after the flood. And the incense that came up from the offering that he brought unto God pleased God in such a way that God reversed the curse that he spoke out over humanity. And God gave us the rainbow as a promise and a reminder that he will keep his promises and that he will be faithful to his word. We see in Genesis chapter 13 verse 18 how Abraham built an altar unto God in a desert after he had separated from his nephew Lot. And God gave him a promise that he will provide for him, that he will make a way for him, even in a desert. So stone altars have significance in the scripture. But in Genesis chapter 4, like I said, the very first thing that Israel did when they went into the promised land was they built a stone altar. But this wasn't an altar of sacrifice. This was an altar of a testimony. A testimony of what? That God made a way for Israel into the promised land. You see, when Israel came to the border of the promised land and they stood on the banks of the Jordan River, God gave these instructions to Joshua that the priests were to go forward with the Ark of the Covenant. And as they went forward, God would make a way in the Jordan River and the priests were to stand in the middle of that Jordan River while God made a way for the whole nation of Israel to cross over. And as they crossed over and they came to the other side, the priests were to stand with the Ark of the Covenant on their shoulders. God was telling Israel then and he's telling us now that he will make a way where there seems to be no way. And unless he goes before us, there can be no significant breakthrough. But when they came out on the other side, Joshua said to the 12 tribes of Israel, Go and fetch a stone from the river and let's build a stone altar unto God to testify that God has made a way for us. You see, a stone altar is not just symbolic of worship, but it's also a testimony of God's faithfulness. Now, why do we use rocks? Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, Jesus said, upon the rock, he will build his church. What is that rock? Matthew chapter 7, the wise man built his house upon the rock, which is God's word. And the storms that came could not overwhelm it. When we build a stone altar, the Bible says in Exodus chapter 20 verse 25, that you are to bring rocks that have come out of the earth without cutting them or without forming them. They are to come rough like they are out of the earth. That is symbolic of God's grace. Let me explain. When you come to Jesus, you come just as you are. Jesus doesn't expect you to change. He doesn't expect you to do anything but to come just as you are. And as you come as you are, He forms you. He does a work in you. He becomes the author and the finisher of your faith. So rough rocks speak about grace. They speak about mercy. How God accepts us as we come from the world just the way we are. But at the stone altar, at the Feast of Tabernacles, we also pour water over the stone altar. Why? Exodus chapter 17 speaks about provision that came for Israel when water came out of a rock. We are busy manifesting that God will make a way, that He will provide, that He will make water come out of a rock for us as a congregation, as the body of Christ. In John chapter 7 verse 37 to verse 39 we see how the promise was given of the Holy Spirit. That he will be like a well of living water that will bubble up from the inside of us once we've received him and been filled with him. 
That was the promise given by Jesus at the Feast of Tabernacles. In Isaiah chapter 44, verse 3 to 4, the prophet Isaiah spoke about a spiritual promise of rain, spiritual rain that will come, souls that will come into the kingdom of God. So as we pour the water, we are manifesting how this spiritual rain at our Feast of Tabernacles, we pray that God will send rain and that what we see manifest in the physical will manifest in the spiritual. But it's also to speak about our own lives. In Philippians chapter 2 verse 17 and 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 6, we read how we must become the offering that is poured out like water. So as we pour that water, we are the offering. We also read in Isaiah chapter 12 verse 3, that with joy we will draw from the wells of salvation. So as we pour water onto the stone altar, we do it with great joy to manifest that God has made a way, that God has blessed us and that we've experienced salvation. So that is my thoughts surrounding the stone altar, the significance of it and why we throw water on it. God bless you.